Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always, told out of voice for radio. So today, we've got a fairly curious new car that we need to have a little bit of a look at. Turns out, Cataday's back. Now, to be fair, this was going to be revealed a, a week or so ago. But unfortunately, they, they did this thing over in Japan, like they do, where they have a stream and they invite viewers on. And if the viewer beats the host, they reveal a card. But the viewer did not beat the host. So they did not reveal a card, which was sad. So we didn't get our Cataday reveal then, but we are getting our Cataday reveal now. It's per ugly. Translation from the lovely Antoine Boulet. Although, honestly, we kind of knew we were getting a Cataday card. And as soon as you know it's a Cataday card, this should be one you can translate yourself. Assuming you remember Cataday, of course. Now, we've got 120 HP to begin with, which is... It's fine for a stage one, but it's entirely uninspiring. Much rather have 130, because there's too many to do 120. we got a retreat cost of four, which makes it too low to use buff padding and too high to use air balloon so you know cheers for that we've got a weakness to fighting which means it shares a weakness with eternatus and beakerom and all those people like me that think they're really clever playing excadrill are gonna have an absolute field day so it's not a great weakness and you're a colorless pokemon which means you don't really get any extra tricks or hit for weakness. You do get powerful colorless energy, which is nice. But that's about it. You get to do an extra 20 damage. Although being Cataday, this could actually really work. We'll get there in a moment. My point is that it's not a great time to be a colorless Pokemon. And when you combine the annoying retreat costs, the slightly too low HP, the bad weakness, and the fact that it gets no extra tricks... Things aren't looking great stats-wise, but it's got Cataday. Cataday, well, the first attack here at least, for a single colorless energy, says that you may draw three cards, and if you do, this Pokemon goes to sleep. Now, to be fair, drawing three cards is good. Being able to draw three cards is nice and lovely, and honestly, you, you don't get many draw free. There are very few Pokemon out there that will actually draw free cards straight off the bat. But you're a stage one. Now, to be fair, there is the Hitmontop from Vivid Voltage that will draw free cards if you discard a card from your hand. But that really is it in terms of basics. No, I'm lying to you. There is EVV. But EVV is a two-prize Pokemon, so I'm not sure how, how much we're going to actually go ahead and count that. So drawing free cards is good, and doing it for a colorless energy is good, but I just don't like the fact that we're doing this on a stage one Pokemon. Now, if you give me a draw free on a single prize basic Pokemon like Hitmontop, I'm kind of in. That sounds really nice to me. Now, you do have to discard a card from your hand from Hitmontop, so it's not perfect, but drawing free cards is good. I mean... It's basically Hop. I mean, Hop's not great. Don't get me wrong. Hop is a weak supporter as far as it goes. But at least you do get to... You basically get to replicate a supporter. A weak supporter. But you are still replicating a supporter. So it could be worse. But you even go to sleep here. And this isn't like back in the Heart Gold Soul Silver era where we had all those babies like Cleffa with sweet sleeping face that gave you essentially invulnerability. If you were asleep, you just go to sleep. So then if you don't wake up, you can't use it. So actually, we could look at a bunch of stage ones like the Whimsicott from Vivid Voltage, like the Forret from Darkness Ablaze, that for one colorless energy, draw three cards, but they don't go to sleep. I also really like Fire It From Darkness Ablaze, single colorless energy, 90 damage, but only if you flip heads. Like, you can use Glimwood Tangle to try and make it more likely you're going to flip a head, and it's probably rarely going to work, but for some reason, I really want to play around with this Fur It. It looks like an awful lot of fun. So, we just don't like this attack. We don't like that it's on a stage one. We don't like the fact that you have to go to sleep to use it. 
there are, frankly, better Pokemon that we can use. But this seems about the right time to remind ourselves about Persian. You see, Persian has got an ability which makes any of these Pokemon that have Cat today way better. The ability is Gathering of Cats, and it reads, ignore all energy in the attack cost of each of your Pokemon in play that has the Cat today attack. So now all of a sudden, not only does this become a free attack, but all of the attacks become a free attack. Now, the fact that it's free does, I suppose, make me like it a little bit more, but it's still a stage one Pokemon, you still have to go to sleep. Let's not get too excited about it. But it does make me look at the second attack here in a much, much better light indeed. Because, you see, it's not just the Cataday attack which is free. It's everything. So now, 4 energy, 120 damage. I mean, look, straight off the bat, 4 energy, 120 damage is absolute terrible trash garbage. No one's interested. If you're telling me that I can put a triple acceleration energy on a Pokemon, and I'm still not able to do 120 damage for the attack, I need more energy on top of it, we ain't going to be friends, ladies and gentlemen. And I told you at the beginning, 120 is fine, but there's a lot of Pokemon that have 120, but there's a lot of Pokemon that have 130, so you're going to end up being just that little bit outside of the realm. The Hooper from Darkness Ablaze has 120, so you'll get the KO, yay! But the Hooper from Unified Minds has 130, so you're going to be 10 damage shy. And I don't want to hear any arguments about using Galarian Zigzagoon. If I'm putting 4 energy onto a Pokemon, I expect to be able to KO 130 HP Pokemon. No, ladies and gentlemen, it's not working. However, if I can do it for free, I'm loving it. And now we go back to powerful colourless energy and things start looking a little bit different. I wasn't a fan of powerful colourless energy when it was one of four energy. And if I'm having to put a triple acceleration and a powerful colourless energy, things aren't looking good. But now I can put a powerful colourless energy on there and all of a sudden I'm hitting for 140 damage. I feel very, very different about that. All of a sudden, things are starting to look an awful lot better. I can go 0 energy 120, or I can go 1 energy 140, and now 140 is getting the majority of single prize Pokemon. Decidueye is a stage 2 with 140 HP, blocks GXs and Vs, so now with a single powerful colorless energy, I'm taking down Decidueye, and now I feel a lot, lot better about it. So the question then becomes, does having this zero energy 120 attack make me want to play Cataday? And the answer is, uh, maybe. I mean, we've got a couple of decent attackers for Cataday. They're not amazing, but they're all right. So, you know, we can look at the Litten from Unbroken Bonds. Remember, all the attacks are free if they've got Cataday. So Litten for zero energy does 60 damage and stops your opponent retreating. But you're hitting Weakness. On some decent Pokemon, so you'll get a straight KO on a Jirachi. But you'll actually two-hit KO something like a Zacian or a Zamazenta while stopping them retreating. Now they can still switch out of it, etc., etc. But they're kind of high-retreat Pokemon the are uh, fairly expensive to attack. So you turn off their retreating options, and if they don't switch, maybe you get a cheeky two-hit KO. Two hits will do a total of 240. That could actually work. It's only for some decks, but still, we could be all right. We've got Meow Stick that does 70 damage, but makes a defending Pokemon's weakness psychic until the end of your next turn. But remember, they can switch out of the active to stop that. But that essentially lets you do 210 over two turns, which I'll be honest with you is still not something I'm hugely excited about. It's not terrible, but it's not going to get, you know, three prize Pokemon. It's not going to get all the two prize Pokemon. Honestly, the best one among them has been the Esper, because you do 20 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon, bench Pokemon, for each damage counter on them, so you essentially treble the damage on them, which is nice. 
if you can get some damage going. So now you essentially hit them for 120 with Perugly. I'm getting a weird feeling it's the first time I've actually said Perugly in this video, but it's been on the screen the whole time. And maybe, just maybe, that's 360. I mean, it is, definitely. But maybe this will work. Maybe you hit with Perugly, and then you finish them off using Esper. Remember, if they don't go to the bench voluntarily, you can use Fiona to make them switch to the bench. So maybe having Litten to have a go at things like Zash and Zamazenta while using Perugly and Esper is going to work. I mean, the only other one we've got is a Glamiao, which does 60 damage to a bench GX Pokemon. Also EXs, but they've all rotated out. But honestly, the, the fact that we've got a lot of Pokemon Vs now and it's only 60 and you're going to get KO'd right back, I'm... Um, I, I'm not loving it. Although, incidentally, remember that Glamiao does evolve into Perugly. And weirdly enough, we got the Glamiao before, but we didn't get a Perugly. Feels like this card should have been an unbroken bond, incidentally. So maybe. You know, you're going to be playing Glamiao anyway, so that 60 damage could be relevant. I mean, certainly if we put Perugly next to Persian... You're essentially, instead of doing 90 for free energy, you're doing 120 for zero. Blatantly, that's really good. So you know what? I don't think this is going to be a top tier deck. I really don't. But has this made the Cataday deck genuinely viable? And approximately a billion times better? Yes. Because before we had Litten, and we still had Esper... But we didn't actually have a decent way. When you're playing Esper, you need to do decent damage so you can finish it off with Esper. And there was nothing in the deck that could do that. You know, Persian for a triple acceleration energy, but even then you're still only doing 270, which will get two prize Pokemon, but it won't get all the free prize Pokemon. It won't get V Maxes. At least here, you've got the weird little tricks you had before, but you can in any matchup go 120 with Perugly, switch them to the bench if they don't do it manually, and then Esper to KO. You can two hit KO literally anything, and bearing in mind the only stuff you need to one hit KO is single prize Pokemon, but you will be getting a one hit KO on the vast majority of single prize Pokemon using Perugly. And all of a sudden, we can play this as a legitimate zero energy deck. And honestly, this fixes the biggest problem with Cat today. Getting cheeky KOs with Litten because your opponents add a switching options or they're weak and it's quite quick for you to KO. That's always been an option. Finishing off damage bench Pokemon has always been an option. We've not had that half-decent main attack to set up for the finishing off. And now we do. So I'm actually giving this between three and four Wossies. We don't give half Wossies. That would be barbaric. I can't tell you that Cataday is all of a sudden going to be an amazing deck. But I can tell you this makes the deck so much better. Though it does weird me out that we are expecting Persian to rotate about five to six months after Battle Styles with Perugly comes out. Which is weird. And at that point, Perugly will become absolutely terrible. So why? Why have we waited this long? I don't know. I still like it. But I'd like to know what you think. So let me know in the comment section, would you? Go nuts! Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.